Okay, welcome to part two of the A-star pathfinding coding challenge. Now this is looking kind of odd, and this is where all we've got so far is that we have uh, figured out how to get from the top left to the bottom right most efficiently, <laughs> only if you could go right or left. So uh, I think the, the magic and sort of beauty of the A-star algorithm will be much more apparent if we add two things to this algorithm. One is the ability to go diagonally, but even more importantly, I would say, is the ability to add obstacles. So what happens if there's obstacles there at the top? How is it going to go around them? And so this second part of the video, I'm going to add both those things, and hopefully you'll see a more interesting result at the end. Okay? Thanks for watching. So, um, okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, first add some obstacles. So every spot could be, um, I guess we could call it like a wall. So every spot um, by default is not going to be a wall. But randomly, if I pick a random number between 0 and 1, if that number is less than 0 0.1, uh, I'm going to uh, say this.wall equals true. So I'm going to make a bunch of spots that are walls. And then when I draw, when I display it, um, I'm going to say uh, if this dot wall, I'm going to always override it with uh, black. So the color is always black if it's actually a wall. So let's do that and see if we get, we can see I have a random amount of walls. Now I'm not actually using those as obstacles yet, but we can see I have a random smattering of things that would be obstacles. And let's also um, put the end back uh, to the, the bottom right corner. So now what I want to do is what I also, if it's in the closed set, it's not a valid neighbor, or, right, as long as it's not in the closed set and it's not a wall. And not neighbor.wall. So this makes these not possible spots in the path. And here we go. This is definitely different results than I, would, than I expected. So this is actually, this is working. I'm just losing my confidence. Um, and I think we'll be able to see it better if I add even more obstacles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make this, instead of there being a 10% chance for there being an obstacle, I'm going to make that a 30% chance. Now look at this. We have a problem. The bottom right is an obstacle, so it's never going to be able to get to the end. So let's do a little quick uh, hack here, which is to say, uh, to make sure that the start is never a wall, and the end is never a wall. So even if it picked it by accident, it'll never be a wall. Now there still could possibly not be a path, but you can see it's optimally, there we go. So this is A start, and this is how it really should look. We're seeing the open set, we're seeing the closed set. Um, this is actually working quite nicely. It's uh, quite enjoyable to watch, but <laughs> like, I just want to keep refreshing it. One thing I need to add to this is I need to have it elegantly stop. Here's a scenario where there's no possible solution. Great. You can see it can't, the, there's walls blocking that bottom right corner. So it tried and eventually it got to this point. Cannot read previous of undefined. The reason why it can't do that is because if open set dot length is greater than zero, keep going. Otherwise, no solution. So what I'm going to do to guarantee no solution, uh, just so we can sort of test it and have it elegantly exit, is I'm going to um, make almost everything a wall. So you can see I get this, and I get this at line 184. So where do I get that? 184, which is right here. So it can't, when it has no solution, it didn't get to the part where it um, actually connects everything. So, um, so what I want to do, I want to like break out of the loop because I'm in the draw loop. There's no like really elegant way of doing that. Um, so uh, what I want to do is I'm going to add a variable and I'm going to call it uh, no solution equals true, false. And then if there's no solution, um, um, where, 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 where am I? Uh, if there's no solution, I'm going to say uh, no solution equals true. And I just don't want the code to break. And so uh, as long as there's not no solution, uh, 
do this. I'm going to leave the previous, the last path that it tried to find. So don't try to find a new path. And then also um, it should say no loop. Uh, and I might actually, so we can see that it left the last path. Um, and then, uh, da -da 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 oh, where, where, where am I? Now let's put this back. And we can see, uh, you know, I'm going to try to make something that's probably not going to have a solution, but we'll get somewhere. But it's too much. There we go. Okay, so you can see that there's, oh, that did have a solution. <laughs> Come on, I want something with like a medium length possible solution. There you go. So you can see that's the, the best path it got. Okay, so now we should really add diagonals to this, right? Because I should let it be able to go to a diagonal neighbor. That's going to make it kind of, yeah, I don't, I don't need that, but that's a, a possibility here. So let's add that. So what I want to do is, um, da, 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 um, Sorry, uh, what am I doing here? I want to add the diagonal neighbors. So where do I add the neighbors? I have a function here, this dot add neighbors. So again, there's a, probably more elegant ways I could add this, but I'm just gonna say, as long as i is greater than zero and j is greater than zero, then I can add i minus one, j minus one, right? So that's up to the top left. And then, oops, as long as, well, there's definitely better ways to add these neighbors. As long as i is less than columns minus 1 and j is greater than 0, I can add to the right and up. As long as i is greater than 0 and j is less than rows minus 1, I can do to the left and down, so the, I'm doing this in a weird order. And then as long as i is less than calls minus 1 and j is greater than 0, I can do i plus 1, j minus 1, right? So I have minus, minus, plus, minus, minus, plus, plus, ooh, that's not right. This should be plus, plus. <laughs> I didn't do this right. I did the same one twice, right? I did this one twice. So I, this one, last one should be the bottom right, so j plus. Okay, oops, and there's an extra zero here. So this should be, this should be all of, oh, I could use return. Thank you, Alka, in the chat. I'm such a doofus. Um, let me just improve this, because I, I, I don't like the way that I had that. I don't need this silly Boolean, although um, I could just say, because you know it's a lot, it's a little extra if statement. Um, I could say uh, um, I could say I have too much code. Notice how much I have to scroll. I really should reorganize this into multiple JavaScript files. But I don't I don't need to. I could just say uh, return and then no loop. Return is going to like exit out of that draw function instantly. So and then I don't have to have this extra silly if statement here, which is totally unnecessary. That will do. Okay. Um, oops. Hey, what happened to my no loop? Oh, because I put return before no loop. Better call no loop before return, huh? Oh, and by the way, the diagonals are in there now. <laughs> so you can see, um, you can see that the diagonals are in there. Now, the question, I do have an issue with the heuristic, which is that the heuristic still considers the diagonal distance the same as the distance to the left and right. And you could make an argument, but still just one step. Like, I'm a person walking. Is it really that much further for me to walk diagonally than to walk left or right? But I could also, I could, strangely enough, use this, amazingly, I could use this heuristic, right, to know um, heuristic. It's actually not a heuristic in this case, but it's the that taxi cab distance between those, the neighbors. Like, if it's just to the right, it's one. And if it's to the bottom, it's two. Oh, that's not right, actually. It should be the square root. Of, of, so I, I'm not, I, I feel like I've done enough here. <laughs> let's, um, let's just do something to make this a little bit, to have something to look at. Um, let's make it much bigger. And um, let's, uh, let's make the, uh, so let's just, I just want to kind of like watch it work. Um, and we can see, there we go, done. So you can see here, um, 
And in a way, like, uh, you can see that it's working on. So here's the thing. So this is done. I finished. <laughs> Whew. That was a very hard one, and I'm sure there are things. So there's a bunch of things about this that I need to say if anybody has made it to the end of this video. Here's, and, and in the chat, let me know some things I'm forgetting. Number one, there are lots of things about what I've done here that are particularly inefficient. For example, if I need to determine if something is in the open set or the closed set, I'm doing kind of a linear time search through that list to see if it's in there. So some type of tree-based search, a binary heap I think might be the right term, um, you know, something that could add to this to optimize this. If this is like a massive network of so many nodes, it's going to like uh, run very, very slowly. Uh, so that's one thing. Number two is I'm, you know, I'm not doing the best job of like thinking about the difference between a diagonal movement and a, a movement just to the left or up or down. So that's something that could be improved. These are things I'm going to actually make a separate GitHub repo just for this example, and 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 uh, people can contribute to that. So there'll be the like code that's exactly what I've done that's in the uh, that'll be linked, and then there's a repo that people can pull request to to kind of improve and make this more efficient. So that's num that's number two. Number three is. Visual design, I think you could be creative about this. What are you using this for? What's the visualization of it? Do you have like an agent that follows the path? What colors are you picking? How are you choosing where the obstacles should be? You know, there's so many more thoughtful things. One thing I'll mention is that I'll link to it. I have a tutorial of a maze generation algorithm. So the maze generation algorithm uh, generates a maze. So you could combine this with that to generate the maze, then solve the maze with A star. So those are some things. What else am I forgetting? The path doesn't look right still. So actually, there are mistakes here. Uh, I said this thing about I should be dealing with the diagonal thing better, and I really should be because this, uh, this heuristic is no good. I need to go back to, if I'm going to allow diagonal movement, I need to change the heuristic to, where is my heuristic? It's all the way up here at the top to be that Euclidean distance. Because moving to, uh, and I think this is going to fix it. Let's try. Yeah. OK, so uh, this still looks wrong, right? This doesn't look right up here. OK, I'm back. There's an edit thing that just happened there. Because as I was summarizing the video, we noticed, or I noticed, and people from the chat noticed, a very significant bug. And I spent a while trying to find it, and I was not able to find it. Walter Serio in the chat pointed it out. It is quite apparent to me now. Uh, and so there is a significant bug in what I've done so far that's been there since the beginning, but we didn't really notice it until we added the diagonals. The diagonals really made this bug come alive. So the issue is here. As part of the algorithm, remember, as I'm moving to a neighbor, right, if that neighbor is not in the open set, it's a new thing we found, calculate its g, how long did it take for me to get there, and then, uh, and then throw it into the open set. That's what's happening right here. If it's already been in the open set, it's something I've checked before, I only want to determine if it's better. If the new amount of time it took me to get there is better than whatever I last tried to do with that spot. Here's the thing though, no matter what, I'm updating its previous location. So what if it was worse I don't want to update its g, but I'm updating its previous. I shouldn't do that. I should only be updating its previous if the g is actually improved. So there's a few different ways I could solve this. I could kind of move this pre only previous up there, and then I have to make sure I do it here. I'm going to do it by saying um, var new path is false. So I'm going to assume I haven't found a better new path. And I have found a better new path if that new g is better than its previous g. Or if it wasn't in the open set at all in the first place, then it has to be a new path because it's the first path. And then I only need to like recalculate the, I only need to calculate the heuristic and uh, set its previous if I actually have a new path. Please let this work. Um, so now I'm going to run this again. You can see let's we're going to get a new map, and we're going to assume that we're not going to see any, and by the way, I'm pretty sure this is what was happening all the way back in the beginning. Because, for example, let's take out, <laughs> I think this has been ever present all along. Let's take there's no walls, right? Look what I get right now. If there are no walls, zoom. I just go all the way down the center. And what if there's no possible diagonals? Uh, if there's no possible diagonals, I'm going to take out the diagonals. 
uh, right? No diagonals. Uh, it's still doing that whole thing. So anyway, <laughs> I sort of thought something else was going to happen, but I guess I was wrong about that. So let's put the diagonals back in. See it go? It goes straight down the center. That's the optimal path. Uh, and then, um, and then uh, if I add some obstacles back in, uh, we can see if it can find its way there. Uh, this one will not find its way there because there's no spot. So let's, let's I want to at least have an end, something to end on. And uh, that kind of looks like something. Okay, great. So we have done this. <laughs> Train whistle sound. I don't know, this video, how long is this video? It had so many edit points in it. Do you know that if you're watching the edited version of this, the original, if you go back and watch the live stream, this is like hours long as I, there were lots of times where I had to go get water and all that sort of stuff. You don't care about that. So I said a bunch of things about the, what you could do with this. I really think um, visually um, augmenting it, thinking about little optimizations in the algorithm. I'm sure people will add those things in the comments. Uh, you can. Uh, fork and, and, and contribute to the repo or just make your own version of this. Try to have a, uh, uh, you know, think about, could you make an image, right? Could the image, a black and white image, uh, create this map and could you then trace the contour of the image somehow? What types of other ways could you use this pathfinding algorithm creatively with um, a game, terrain, uh, a network of cities. There's so many ways you could expand on this. I hope that you enjoy this. I hope you learn something. I hope you take the code, improve it. Uh, let me know on Twitter what you thought. Um, and I think that's really about it for A star algorithm in JavaScript coding challenge. Thank you for watching. <laughs>